Britain is brimming with hoarders. Oh, look, another console. Every time I look at one part, I think, where does start? Their collecting is catastrophic. You keep seeing stuff and you keep thinking, yeah, I'll go on. And they're drowning under clutter. Whoa! But help is at hand. Get rid of it for a bit of sanity. Collectibles expert Curtis Dowling will work out what is worth cashing in. I could get between 60 and 100 pounds for you. Very happy. It's a pleasure. Marvellous. While Queens of Clean, Joanna Riley and Marianne Kamak will sort out what to keep and what to chuck. I can't even get in the door. The majority of the stuff is beautifully wrapped. It's been well taken care of. Clearing rooms for the first time in years. Guys, this is amazing. No one said it would be easy. Well, we're getting there, aren't we? So can our hoarders bear to part with their possessions? Can't send them to the skip, can you? And reclaim their homes for good. I'm keeping an eye on you, though, because uh, there's some of them I'd like to keep. Today, we're in Preston to help two pals regain some much-needed personal space in their shared abode. If we had it cleared, you wouldn't be under my feet but they're not going to give up their hoard easily. Do you want to keep the majority of the stuff here today? I would probably say 75%. And in Peterborough, a penchant for teapots has boiled over into an out-of-control passion. I need somebody to turn around and say, shall we just get them all down and we'll put them in boxes and they're gone. But can our experts find these pots another home? Right, now I've got this teapot. And this is just an example of the 300-odd. 300. Today, our SOS team is helping a lady who is drowning in tea pots. I have teapots in the bedrooms, all around the dining room, and they're even out in the shed. But first to Preston where pals John and Patricia were introduced to one another because of their shared pagan traditions. They hit it off as friends and seven years ago decided to house share, and it's a case of two's a crowd. That's a pretty one. Lovely. Thanks to their accumulated junk. I tend to try not to see it, because I'm, I'm embarrassed by it, to be honest. And I think that's possibly one of the problems, because if I can't see it, I might think, oh, I haven't got that. I need to get that in order to do something else. And then later on down the line, I'll discover I've got two of the same things. It's quite a large quantity of items, really. So, yeah, they need to go, <laughs> like, now. <laughs> The mess is made up of some weird and wonderful paraphernalia mixed with Patricia's craft materials and other more down-to-earth bits and bobs. Jasmine's my granddaughter and she made these pictures. Oh, and this is Jasmine's potty as well. We need to get rid of that. The, the dining room and conservatory are blocked. We've never been able to use the conservatory as a conservatory. It's, it's basically a dumping ground and a cat room. We don't have room to breathe, basically. Some of the things I have have not been unwrapped since 1979. And health issues mean John and Patricia have reached the point of no return. On a practical level, it can be difficult to get around the house. I mean, we, we both use a stick. Without some help, the future looks, well, rather squished. Q, owner of cleaning company Joanna, who relishes in moving out mess. And antique aficionado Curtis, whose 25 years' experience can spot valuables a mile off. Hello, welcome. Hi, Come in. Lovely, Thank thanks very you. much. Please. They're experts in deciding what to cash, keep, and clear from a home. So for Curtis, it's straight to the conservatory, home to some fantasy board games dating from the 1980s. And I imagine this was quite an expensive hobby to have, really. Well, it, it, yes, because you've got booster packs, you've got add-ons, you've got new characters. So it, it was quite expensive at the time. Role-playing games like these had a huge following, hitting their peak in the mid-80s before video games took over. Well, the good news is games are making a resurgence 
they are starting to go up in value. The fact you've kept this in such superb condition is just amazing. Would you be happy if I said you could get 30 or 40 pounds? I would be happy with that, yes. And Curtis has spotted another game John's willing to sell. So this one's not in quite good condition, but the name outdoes that name, doesn't it? It does, really. I right. think, in total, for these games, 60 to 80 pounds. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm happy with that. So while Curtis continues to snoop for items to sell... There's a lot of eclectic stuff in here, I'm telling you. Nope, nothing to say about that. Joanna's not having quite so much luck with Patricia. Halloween decorations, Christmas decorations... I've noticed. It should go up in the loft. Do you want to keep the majority of the stuff here today? I would probably say 75%. That you want to keep? Yeah. OK. Yeah. Patricia wants to keep 75% of her hoard. At this rate, I'm not too sure how we're going to clear the house. So while Joanna wonders how to persuade Patricia to part with her hoard, Curtis has found something else he thinks might be French collectible. We were told it might be a Lalique. OK. We paid four pounds for it. Oh. Lalique mark most of their bowls in the middle. If we look through it, there's not an R Lalique and there's no Lalique. Disappointingly, what we have is a 1970s glass bowl. Correct. Uh, that is probably worth four quid. Sorry. OK. The humble glass bowl isn't worth selling, so into the charity pile it goes. But Patricia has something else up her sleeve that may be more sellable. I thought you might be interested in this watch that belonged to my mother. It's still in its original box. It is, and that's nice, isn't it? I think my father bought it for her for possibly an anniversary. It's either 18 or 24 karat gold plate, if it was solid, it would be a lot heavier, and obviously there'd be a hormone. And happy to let it go. Yes, I don't wear it. I'm guessing that's got to be something like £60. Pounds. Would that be enough? Yes, I'd be happy with that. Let's hope Curtis can make time equal money. Outside, John's busy with his runes. You know how it is. What are you up to, John? Just looking at the runes, Curtis. You can use them for telling the energies, or some people use them for telling the future. Maybe they'll predict a windfall. Are they being sold? Um, no, Curtis, but this is. Shisha pipe? It's just sitting there doing nothing. I say 20, 30 pounds for that. That sounds good to me. Anything else you're selling? Uh, this jacket. Oh, get you with a mosquito jacket. Should I give you a little twirl? Mmm, John can rock it, but what can he pocket? Well, that's got to be a couple of hundred pounds, John. I'm happy with that. I bet you are. That Curtis, he'd take the shirt off your back. Vintage leather clothing and accessories are extremely popular at the minute. High-end designers like Moschino are known for their timeless style, so can command a good price. Having finished searching for sellable items, Curtis takes away John's board games, the leather jacket, the shisha pipe and Patricia's mum's watch. Hey, getting on. We've made a little start today. We've cleared a few things from the garage. I think Patricia needs a clear, safe environment for them to be able to move around. A clearer house is going to make life a little bit easier for them, I guess. How's your job been? I don't think we're going to make an awful lot of money. I think selling might be the icing on the cake. Shall we get on? Go. Come on. Curtis is keen to get selling, but Joanna's going nowhere as she needs to persuade John and Patricia to get rid of some of this mountain of unused stuff. <laughs> Heading to auction, Curtis is hoping someone will be interested in John's fantasy board games. They look at £60 pound for these. Let's see what the auctioneer says. And we're going straight in, 20, 22, 24, 26, We've got to get 60 pounds out of this. 40 pounds, 45, 50. It's going. 50 pounds now. 55, we've got 60 I'm looking for now. We've got it on the internet. I'm looking for 60 now. At 55 pounds of you all finished. At 55 pounds of you all done on my left. You have it. So that's a decent 55 quid for John and Patricia. It's pretty much what me and John discussed. 
Isn't it lovely to be right sometimes? And it's not just John and Patricia's SOS that our experts are responding to. Meet 63-year-old Eileen from Peterborough. She's potty for teapots. Lots and lots of teapots crammed into the two-bed semi she shares with her husband. I have teapots in the bedrooms, all around the dining room, and they're even out in the shed. I haven't got any in the bathroom. Now, come on, I'm doing well. But now, with a torrent of teapots jam-packed into virtually every nook and cranny, they're in the kitchen, the dining room and in the living room, she's putting a lid on her collecting. Have I got to be really truthful and say I'm getting too old for all this? Because it's true, I am. I'll need somebody to turn around and say, here, shall we just get them all down and we'll put them in boxes and they're gone? Yes, please. In other words, I need a kick. <laughs> Joining Curtis on his Cash for Clutter mission is professional housekeeper Marianne, who knows all about keeping things tidy. Lovely day. It's a Beautiful lovely day. day. I think... But she's going to have a job helping Eileen declutter these teapots. Hi, Eileen. Hi. Great to meet you. Gosh, Eileen, you love a teapot, don't you? But this isn't it, is it? No. There's more. There's more out in the dining room and the kitchen. Kitchen, where the kettle is? Yes. Just boiled? Yes. Oh. That's right, you leave me to rummage then. I'm going to have a Definitely. cup of tea with this lady. Have fun. Thank you. While Curtis eases himself in gently... This is quite pretty. Although it's not a teapot, clearly needs a good dust. It's a teapot with a difference that catches his eye in the kitchen. Everyone's got a Toby jug. Well, it's more a Toby teapot. And the only real Toby jugs were made by a guy called Ralph Wood. Yes. And they are worth the price of a new car. Yes. Sadly, this isn't a Ralph Wood and Eileen's hanging on to him. But Curtis is like a dog with a bone when it comes to making money. He's determined to find something he can sell in the living room. I noticed this one sitting at the front, which I thought might be Claris Cliff, which was the real designer and maker of porcelain in the 30s. They're selling for hundreds, if not thousands, of pounds. Oh, sounds promising. It's not Claris Cliff, but even though it's not Claris Cliff, it's that very desirable 1930s style. Oh. Have a quick look at it. It does have a little bit of a chip there on the front, yes. but it's not too much of a chip for it to knock the value flat. There's one pot to pedal. But Curtis hasn't finished his rummaging yet, and Marianne hasn't even started her colossal clear-out. Still to come, Curtis calls Eileen out on how her hoard became so huge. You're like the Pied Piper of Peterborough. No, no, I didn't do this. Joanna is starting to win the Battle of Clutter with Patricia. The cluttered area is, is to me, a cluttered mind. So if it was clear, I'd be able to relax. That's our aim, then. Yeah. Get this room clutter-free. Yeah. In Preston, Joanna struggles to find clutter that John and Patricia want to part with. Halloween decorations, Christmas decorations... I've noticed. ..that should go up in the loft. But at least in Peterborough, Eileen's decided to put a lid on her teapot collection. It's true, I'm getting too old for all this. Meanwhile, it's not just Eileen's pots that Curtis has his eye on. If pottery has a mark, that can tell you who made it, where it was made and when it was made, allowing experts like our Curtis to value the piece. So there's the mark. This vibrant vintage plate, made by English potter's masons, is highly collectible, so Curtis thinks he can fetch Eileen some dough for it. I think I'll have that. There's no stopping him, and he's hoping Eileen has a gem hidden among her pots. Something like that shape. They're called bullet teapots, and everyone assumes a bullet, because it is now, is that James Bond shape. But 250 odd years ago, a bullet was basically like a very small ball. So it's probably worth looking and having a mooch around to see okay, if you've right? got anything like that. Rare bullet teapots can fetch thousands of pounds. Here's hoping Eileen's been gifted one of those. But Curtis is determined to hunt down the creme de la creme of Eileen's collection. And it's not just old items that can deliver on the dosh front. 
As novelty teapots go, something like that is pretty desirable. I think we could probably look at 20, 25 pounds. That's all right. That too. It's in good condition, and I can't keep stressing enough that things have to be in good condition to sell. The trouble with collectibles is damage can really significantly change the value. Now, you can have costly repairs done, but it might not make them worth more money. It just might make them more attractive. Curtis has a plan. He hopes he can use this novelty postbox teapot to tempt a trader to buy Eileen's full collection. In Eileen's curiosity shop Come Diner, our mess-mutilating matron, Marianne, is having a dickens of a time scrubbing up pots, so they are all ready should Curtis seal a deal. So, Eileen, how did you get into teapots? From a game of bingo. You won one at bingo? Yes, a musical one. <laughs> and that started it all off. Well, then everybody thought it was lonely, so... They started coming as Christmas presents, birthday presents and everything. And all my hubby kept saying was, well, it's homely, isn't it? I'll build you another shelf. And we have shelves and shelves, shelves and, and shelves. shelves of teapots. And where do you see, once these have gone, where you want to move forward in your life? I know where I want to move forward here, is get this all decorated and minimalistic, as you so call it. Oh, well, and the no, minimalistic. And no, and no dusting. No, just to, perhaps when I do dust it, it might take me, what, 15 minutes, just to take one item off the shelf, dust it and put it back and that's it. Eileen's colossal clear out isn't only because of her desire to decorate, she has big news. My daughter Kelly rang me up about two weeks ago and said she's pregnant, so that's going to make me a nanny for the first time. Oh, wow, And she's that's doing great. about eight months. Oh, fabulous. So, I don't want a lot of things around. There's going to be a patter of tiny feet. No, because patter of tiny feet, feet and china don't really mix, do no, they? And no. you can quite well imagine a little child picking things up and going, Granny, yes. smash on the floor, and then it's curtains, isn't it? Yes. So, Eileen is coping with the day very well. The fact that she is going to be really happy that we're going to get rid of her teapots, she's happy to clear them all out, and she's going to make some money. Um, so she's really pleased about that. Back in Preston, Joanna is making a breakthrough and is finding items John and Patricia are happy to clear out. Are there any items that you can see just looking now that you want to get rid of? Yes, definitely. The baby high chair. OK. Um, a cupboard drawers full of DVDs. Yeah. And a mosaic and some mirrors. Brilliant. Pass that to me. Can you manage? Yes, thank you. The key to decluttering is to make swift decisions. Patricia's just shown it in there. I'm hoping the rest of the house will be plain sailing. The pair's health issues mean they can't physically clear the clutter alone, and it's becoming a hazard. If things start to spill over and make the pathways smaller, that is difficult. I could trip, which I have done, and that's really hurt, hasn't it? Yeah. Creating space to move freely, enjoy their separate interests and invite pals over is a common goal. It would be an absolute dream to have the dining room clear in the way that I want it. I can hardly explain just how much it would mean. If we had it cleared, we could each have our own space, do our own thing. And you wouldn't be under my feet. Well, I would, anyway. I'd find a way. Your clearing wish is Joanna's command, and it's no wonder they can't entertain in the diner. Is there a table I can see somewhere? Uh, you can see a little tiny bit of it. Yes, a wee bit. Yes. I'd like to see a lot more of it. OK. It would be really good to reclaim the table. Yeah, I, I think a table is important, though. Mm. You can do some crafts at the table or have lunch at the table. Yes. Lunch at the dining table. Now, that's a novel idea, Joanna. What's this room used for? Has it just been a bit of a dumping yard? Yes, it has in recent months, yes. The cluttered area is, is to me, a cluttered mind, and I can't relax. So if it was clear, I'd be able to relax and meditate. That's our aim, then? Yeah. Get this room clutter-free? Yes, please. What we don't want to do is move it from one space and keep putting it into another. That's what we've been doing, moving things from one space to another. 
Let's make a start now. Well, Patricia is saying all the right things and she does seem determined to get back that much needed space. I just hope she and John can keep the momentum going to see it through to the end. So with the aim of a clutter-free house and the clear out now underway, Joanna is pretty confident she can leave John and Patricia to continue sorting through the dining room and the conservatory on their own. Back in Peterborough, still fishing for a top-notch pot to flog, Curtis is starting to flounder. So he and Eileen head upstairs. Come on, I'll take you up my bedroom. Blimey. More teapots? No, no teapots up here, not in here. What do you think of my fish? Glass fish. Murano glass fish, I would suggest. I believe that's what they are. The Venetian island of Murano has been specialising in making fancy glassware for centuries. Do you like them? No, not particularly. Oh. And I don't think they belong up here. They belong somewhere where they would look more attractive, but I'm not taking them downstairs and we declutter down there. She wants rid, despite them all being gifts from her husband. You're like the Pied Piper of Peterborough. No, no, I didn't do this. I, <laughs> no, I admit to do it for them. you, don't they? People just keep bringing you things and adding to them. What next? These new are actually quite expensive. They're sort of 100, 120 pounds for something big like that. Maybe the smaller ones are sort of 50, 60, 70 pounds. I think if I could bring you back 40 to 50 pounds for all of them, yes, would you be happy with that? Yes. Right. So that's my challenge. Eileen is lovely. She makes a good cup of tea too. She is the easiest person in the world to work with because she wants to get rid of all these teapots. Secondly, she doesn't have any anticipation about the value, about what she's going to get back. She just wants the space. Getting loads of money is actually a plus as opposed to an essential. Doesn't mean we're not going to do well though, because I think we will. Curtis has searched high and low for curiosities to cash in on, and he heads off with the novelty postbox teapot, hopeful it will secure a sale for Eileen's complete collection. He leaves the 1930s teapot, along with all the other teapots, the mason's plate and the Murano fish in safe hands to be carefully cleaned and wrapped before selling. I am having the best day with this lady. She is so much fun. And she's really nice, easy to get on with. I'm helping her get rid of the teapots all cleaned up. So I must crack on. And I've got a lot to sell. And I'll catch you later. Come on, then. No time for a final brew-up. Curtis is at a street market in Glasgow, hoping to interest stall holder Davy in the postbox teapot and possibly a few more. Right, now I've got this teapot, and this is just an example of the 300-odd... 300, 300. 300 teapots I've got to sell. Now, I tell you what, this lady, she rued the day she ever said she liked teapots. teapots yeah. Time to bring this sale to the boil. What I'm looking for is to sell them as a job lot. OK. And just get rid of them. So right. if you are interested and you want to make me an offer, that's great. I'll bring them down to you. If you're still happy, I'll take the money off you then. OK. Well, so I take it or leave it. OK. 250 a lot, sight unseen. And if they're all right, they're fine. I'll give you the money. And if they're not all right, we'll walk away? Yeah. Yeah, do you know what? That is a fair deal. OK. Davy bought the teapots unseen for £250, along with £25 for the postbox teapot. So, ladies, take care when wrapping. You'll be expecting them to arrive in pristine condition. And Curtis hopes he can add to that total as he still has a few more items to sell for Eileen. Still to come, in Peterborough, Eileen unearths one of her most prized pots. This is the first teapot that I ever had. And in Preston, Patricia toughens up. I'm going to try to be ruthless. In Peterborough, Eileen needs expert help ditching the hundreds of teapots she's been hoarding for decades. And we have shelves and shelves, shelves and, and shelves. shelves of teapots. And in Preston, John and Patricia need assistance making their home less of a hazard. I could trip, which I have done. 
Curtis has brought Patricia's watch to a busy antiques market in Essex, hoping he can interest shopkeeper Polly. I don't know if this is up your street, oh. but it's retro and it's fun. Ah, a little watch. Mm, a gold-plated watch. It's very sweet, but I probably wouldn't offer you that much for it, Curtis. Mm. Well, I've got to get £60 for it, so I might as well say it bluntly. I'm going to be blunt back. Mm. It'd be a stretch to give you 30, really. Mm. OK, well... But thank you for showing it to no, me. No, I tried, and that's all I can do. So no luck here for Curtis, and the watch goes back to Patricia in Preston. Motivated by Joanna's advice, John and Patricia are gearing up to sort through the clutter and identify what to keep and what to clear. Today has got me fired up. We need space to do what we want to do, so the process today is very positive. And to me now, a cluttered house is a cluttered mind, and I want to unclutter my mind. <laughs> Joanna advised to make it a 20-second rule when we're looking at things. Are we keeping it, selling it, throwing it away? So I'm trying to stick with that. In the dining room, Patricia discovers that decluttering is actually child's play, especially when a portion of the clutter belongs to her granddaughter, Jasmine. Ooh, stones. She loves them. I think she needs to keep this. Oh, that's Jasmine's healing fairy. I wonder where that had gone. That should live in her fairy garden. Well, a place for everything and everything in its place. I'm going to try to be ruthless. In the garden, John is so gung-ho, he's willing to sacrifice a prized collection of books in order to clear space. These are Dennis Wheatley books, um, a collection of 20 of them. One of my favourite authors. Most of Dennis Wheatley's stories are uh, good versus evil. Even though they have dark aspects, the, the good side always wins out. I'll be honest with you, it's quite difficult, but I'm prepared to let them go. There's definitely some magic at work in the conservatory. Mind your back. Yeah. Now they've started, there's no stopping John and Patricia. Do we want to keep this, you and me, sat on a bench? Do you know, to be honest, it doesn't really do anything for me. OK. Well, I can go then. Yeah. Patricia is uncovering items that haven't seen the light of day for decades. And that's my Kenwood. Don't think you've ever seen it. I've heard about it. 1970s vintage mixer. This can go for sale. So I'll take so. it we're not having cakes anymore. No cakes. With Patricia so ruthless, John's delighted by the progress they're making. So I'm just excited that we're getting a room back. We're actually now physically getting rid of things. Then you don't trip. Oh, I'll be careful, don't worry. The dining room and the conservatory are already looking much tidier, but the effort is beginning to take its toll. I can only do a little bit at a time, then I have to sit down and then I'll get distracted. I've got the attention deficit cleaning disorder. <laughs> I do a bit of this, then I'll wander off and I'll do something else. Slowly but surely, the tide of clutter recedes. They pack two large boxes for charity, about 12 boxes of items for sale, and three bags of rubbish. A fantastic effort from John and Patricia. It's been quite empowering, really, and motivating to get more stuff sorted and got rid of. Yes, it's been a really good day. Yeah. Curtis has come to a busy antiques village to see if he can smoke out a buyer for John's shisha pipe. I've been everywhere with the shisha pipe today and nobody wants it. Well, Curtis looks like it's time to quit. The shisha pipe ends up back with John and Patricia, which leaves one more item to sell. Should I give you a little twirl? Curtis has come to Glasgow's West End to meet Justina, a guru of vintage fashion, hoping he can raise a few pounds from the sale of John's designer jacket. I've never sold second-hand clothes before, so can you sell it? I've got a client and I would actually love it. Already? Yeah. 
how much we were looking for. I mean, what would have this been new? Maybe 800 to 1,000 pounds. If I said 200 then, that's not going to be unrealistic, is it? Slightly, if you go 170. I'm not going to argue with you. I still think that's a really good price for a 15-year-old leather jacket with a piece of metal stuck on the back. Look at that, 170 pounds. I'm sure it's all there, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> 15 years ago, 900 pounds, but I still got 170 pounds for it. I made up with that, and I reckon they will be too. Back in Peterborough, in Eileen's kitchen, Marianne's in her own little bubble, carefully packing up each delicate piece. That'll help keep the teapots in tip-top condition for their journey to Glasgow Antiques dealer Davy. It's worth spending time to see if you've still got the original packaging for the item, as that may add a value and interest to the piece. And now it's time for Marianne to get her hands on the holy grail of teapots. Out in the garden shed is the most revered piece of Eileen's collection. This is the first teapot that I ever had. So this is the teapot you won at the bingo. The original one. This is the original from yes. the bingo. So, Eileen, it's not very organised, but you no, could but definitely No, but it's just it been in. bunged in here. Nearly all of this in this shed can be got rid of, can't it? Yes. So then we can completely clear it out. This makes me smile, though. This girl's night out, right? I tell you, there won't be enough pennies in there to last my night out, I tell you. And it's empty now, so what have you been doing? Been empty for a long while. <laughs> well, it wouldn't last me five minutes. With Marianne's help, Eileen has embraced the teapot tidy out. And now it's a case of clearing out that shed and getting all those teapots packed up and on their way. But in Eileen's house, there's always time for another cuppa. Back in Preston, John and Patricia have been taking Joanna's decluttering advice to heart and are making a few final finishing touches before their awaited visitor arrives. Do you think there's anything else we could have done in here? Because Joanne's are about to arrive any minute. I don't think there is, to be honest, no. I think just let us see how, what we've done. And yeah. That should be fine. Looking forward to seeing my friends. Hi, John, Patricia. Hi, Hi welcome. How are you guys doing? Not too bad, thanks. I've come to check your rooms. I hope that they're decluttered. Yes, yes they, they are. are. Lead the way. John and Patricia brought a lifetime's worth of possessions with them when they moved in together seven years ago. The dining room was overflowing with Patricia's craft materials and all sorts of junk. There was barely any room to move, never mind eat. Now the room has been transformed. The clutter has been cleared, creating a bright and spacious dining room. Right, just look at this. Right, just look at that. Guys, I am impressed. What do you call this? It's a table. <laughs> wow! You didn't have a table last time, OK? No, no, we didn't. It was stacked to the ceiling. It's amazing. You've done a really, really, really good job. And I remember the most important thing, why you wanted your table, was to do arts and crafts with your granddaughter. That's right, yes. John and Patricia have done a fantastic job. With all Patricia's craft supplies packed away, they now have the space they were craving. Am I going to be impressed when I have a look at the next room? Yes, you are. Shall I lead the way, John? Lead the Do you way. mind me taking the no, reins here? No, I don't I'm mind. I'm being a bossy two shoes. The conservatory had been more of a dumping ground rammed full of items, some of which hadn't been used since the 1970s. And now the clutter has gone, and they have a light and airy space. What can I say? The two of you, I am super impressed. You've got a conservatory. We have. With space. Yes. Yes, space, again, that we can use. Yes. Um, we can be in here all seasons. The spaces, cleared in just eight weeks, mean John and Patricia can now safely move around their home. I don't even remember you having this carpet. Was no. there a carpet last time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. All we could do was walk through. Yeah. In a... It's like a, a path. Yeah. Through. John and Patricia have done a fabulous job. 
They have got rid of 14 boxes and three bags of items for charity, rubbish and for selling. How has the process been for the two of you? It's been amazing. Yeah? Absolutely amazing. It's really freed us. What do you mean freed you? Getting rid of the stuff, it's, it's sort of lifted us, lifted our spirits. Oh, how nice. Yeah. You've got your life back in some yes, respects. Yes, we, we have. Yes, we're getting there. There's, it's still a journey to go on. There's still more to do, but we've gone a long way on this journey. <laughs> Talking about journeys, Curtis has made a few of them, selling your items. Has he? Yes. Curtis took away a selection of John and Patricia's items, including John's retro board games and his leather jacket. And he's made a cash for clutter total of just over £250 for them to spend on whatever they choose. But most importantly, they have reclaimed that much needed space so they can both enjoy their hobbies. It wasn't just about the money for you two. No. It was much more important than the yeah. money. It was to get you space. Yes. And freedom. Freedom yeah. from all the clutter. Yes. And you're free from all the clutter now? Yes. Mm. Wow. Look at the space. I'm absolutely delighted with the work John and Patricia have done. It means they've got space back to enjoy their time with granddaughter Jasmine and that little bit of cash we've earned them. Still to come, in Peterborough, mother and daughter clash over what's clutter. Why are you giving the fish to Curtis? Because I don't like them. I love them. And Eileen finds out if her pots have made her some pennies. You've made me some money, have you? made you a couple of bob, yeah. That's all right. You might be happy with that. In Peterborough, Eileen is getting to grips with her tea pottiness. They started coming as Christmas presents, birthday presents and everything. And all my hubby kept saying was, well, it's homely, isn't it? I'll build you another shelf. Over the next few weeks, with a total of about 300 teapots to clean and wrap, Eileen wastes no time getting on with the task ahead. Since Marianne and Curtis left, we've been so busy decluttering. The problem's been we didn't know where to put the boxes when they're all bubble wrapped, so I've got them in the shed, the carport, and there's still um, bubble wrapped teapots in the house. I will be pleased to see them go. But with 150 pots still to box and send to the buyer in Glasgow, Eileen calls in daughter Kelly to help. Kelly is keen to help make her mum's home more child-friendly, as she is expecting. Hi, Mum. And Eileen sets about teaching Kelly her regimented pot wrapping technique. So what, what I do, you see, you put it in there and then you put that in, in there and then you wrap. Right. Because the lids, the spouts and the handles are the main thing that gets broke. OK. And if they get broke, they ain't going nowhere but the trash. You start off by going round the spout and the handle. OK. Just like this. All right. OK. And that's that one done. No pressure, Kelly. Here you go. OK. OK. And then, yeah, that's all right. Phew, at ease. Oh, and what's more we've got to do? What? All this lot round here, all that lot in there, and still more out in the kitchen. Really? Oh. Kelly is soon given her marching orders to wrap the glass fish Curtis is going to sell, but Kelly's not happy. I don't mean to be rude, but why are you giving the fish to Curtis? Because I don't like them. I love them. I used to see them on the windowsill, and I, I love the swirly colours. I just feel that they're part of my childhood. Right. So, if you wouldn't mind, Curtis can have the ones at the top shelf that you're bringing down. Yes. And I keep the ones at the bottom shelf. OK, that's fine. So, some fish are staying in the family, but Eileen's not passing any of her pots down the line. No more teapots, huh? No. Are you happy about that? Extremely. Yay! Mother and daughter are making a champion effort. Get modern. Declutter. And with all the pots now boxed up, they are ready to make their way to Davies' antique stall in Glasgow. 
With Kelly keeping four of Eileen's Murano fish, Curtis only has four to flog. He sells three of them for a tenner at an antiques market. Everyone wants a bargain, and these fish, they're just not in fashion. Eileen didn't like them, so I think she's just quite pleased they're out of her bedroom. So now Curtis is moving on to the leftover Murano fish, the mason's plate and a solitary teapot he didn't sell to Davy. He's hoping that stall owner Laurie will part with some cash. First thing, 1930s teapot and stand. Mm -hmm. OK. Mason's plate. Mm -hmm. Nice, colourful. And this Murano-looking glass fish. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I need to get rid of them. It kind of fits your stall, actually. Yeah, a little bit eclectic, a bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. so make me an offer. Um, £12 for the three. I think that's a fair price. Yeah, it is. Lovely and easy. Right. £12, is that a good price? Well, if I hadn't have got £12 from Laurie, I don't think they'd have sold. Back in Peterborough, Eileen has kept up the good work, clearing out her teapot collection. And she's making a few adjustments before the final inspection. I think Curtis will be very happy with the work I've done and surprised. I don't think they ever thought that kitchen or dining room would ever be empty of teapots. And I think he'll be very pleased with me. Curtis is here to catch up with Eileen and see what progress she's made. I'm looking forward to seeing this lady. Lovely lady. I hope you're not expecting a cuppa this time, Curtis. Good. Thanks very much. It's nice to see you again. And you. I hope you've done all lots of work for me. Of course I have. Come on, let's have a look. Eileen's home had been overflowing with teapots of all shapes and sizes. The collection was in the living room, in the kitchen, in the dining room. Well, it was everywhere. And now the teapots have gone and the living room is clutter-free. The shelves and surfaces are clear. I've got all the teapots out here. Oh, uh, that's everywhere. a bit clearer. And look at my cabinet, not a thing in it. Nothing. It's empty. All the teapots gone. All teapots off the top and off the windowsill. Yeah. New unit down there. Yeah, notice that. Right, mantelpiece all cleared. Is it weird not having them all around? No. In the dining room, the collection had covered every bit of spare space. And now the room has been transformed and not a teapot in sight. It has been cleared and redecorated, creating a bright and fresh look. Oh, wow. Different house. Yes, completely. That's fabulous. I love it. There's so much more space in here as well. It does look like a completely different room. Yes. Before, it did feel a little bit claustrophobic to me. Yes. I think because the shelves were high, it felt like it was all coming in on you. Yes. And I have to say, those teapots didn't do it for me all over the house. Well, they didn't do it for you in the end, did they? No. You won't do this again, will you? No. You won't start filling the house up full of I stuff. I ain't buying nothing for the house. Right. I think it's about time we talked about money. Right. You made me some money. Have you? I made you a couple of bob, yeah. That's all right. You might be happy with that. Curtis sold around 300 of Eileen's teapots, along with four Murano fish, the mason's plate, and a couple of other small items. So, how much did I make? How much did you make? Well, that's the fish gone and all the teapots. And I think we did well. Good. Because those teapots aren't the most fashionable things yeah. in the world these days. Yeah. And most of them came from places like charity shops and boot well, fairs. That's true. So all in all, with all of it, £307. That's all right. Yes, I'm pleased. Well, I've got a holiday coming up, so it'll be a bit more spending money. That's a cracking bit of spending money, to be honest. Yes. 307 quid. £307 better off. You don't own many teapots anymore, and your house looks great. I think that's a job well done, don't you? Yes. For both of us. Maybe we should both pat ourselves on the back. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, this, is, uh, this is pleasing, this is. I'm very pleased with this. Good. You know what? I was really looking forward to coming back here. What a delightful lady. She's done a fabulous job of the house. Not only that, she's £307 better off. She's got rid of all her teapots, and she's never going to clutter like this again. And I think we've started a chain reaction where the whole house is getting decorated, and it's only because the teapots are gone, and she's tidy, and she feels good about it. Fantastic. What a good day.